Hello, welcome to Industry Voice. Today, our guest is Mikhail Samsonov, the Chief Medical Officer at R Farm, one of the leading pharmaceutical companies in Russia and Eastern Europe. Mikhail will share farmers' perspective on the ongoing trends in the industry and comment on its latest breakthrough with the recent FDA approval. Mikhail, thank you very much for having us at your office. We appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. So I would like to start with some general questions. How could you sum up the six-month effect of the pandemic on your current processes? What were the major challenges associated with COVID-19 outbreak? It's a good and it's classical question. It's a lot of people actually discussing and looking what was different, uh, what actually gives us some advantages, or what was difficult. And I think from process perspectives, it was an incredible increase of speed in decision-making and also good stress test for all people first systems and how we operated. And then again, during that time, we actually ran three clinical trials for COVID in, in Russia, but also outside, including, you know, different types of patients from mild, moderate and severe, including, you know, our leading IL-6 compound, Artlegia plus business as usual for, for the rest. Clearly, COVID-19 has accelerated a lot of virtual activities uh, in both drug development and clinical research. Was it applicable to our farm? Yeah, sure. Um, in several directions. First, uh, if you look on classical, what we're discussing today, like running the clinical trials. So it's not only project management, which we might do, you know, from a distant and a lot of, you know, um, virtual activities, but mainly monitoring. And, you know, like source data verification, which we did uh, during COVID, particularly in COVID trials uh, from, kind of from a distance. Risk-based risk monitoring is another approach where reducing, you know, focusing on core data and reducing on only key points and then collecting. We also faced interesting difference in uh, number of countries because, again, we are in the end of our very large phase three program with Artlegi with IL-6, where Osiki has been involved in, in Russia and several other countries. So if you compare approach of regulators, for example, in Europe, in the European Union and Latin America, Russia, and US, uh, European Union was very strict on GDPR and it's impossible to do, you know, ASDV without visiting, you know, sites. And and this has actually put some limitations of source data verification for first wave of COVID and will be interesting and challenging to see what is happening now during, you know, fall and then, you know, winter. Because it's actually put in some limitations, even not on the ongoing trials, but also on the COVID trials. From um, technical perspectives and methodology, we do have, you know, few platforms like EDC or like, you know, ET, MERS management and so on, which could be done and we actually we use this during COVID time for not only for acceleration, but also for support. And now we're in testing process of submitting data to regulators, some COVID trials, plus also, again, during that time, we actually completed a couple of our key phase three trials in rheumatoid arthritis across 17 countries. And we just got, you know, final study reports for our CRIDA 2, and now we are waiting for CRIDA 3. And again, majority of database log activities, statistical and closing actually happened during COVID time. How did our farm respond to COVID-19 in terms of new products developed? Our farm was very focused on very energetic and I believe we were in a very good position for, for several reasons as pharmaceutical company. Um, first, we did and we do have in our portfolio several compounds which actually were able to re represent very fast. And again, coming back, like in the beginning of our discussion, uh, in COVID we may see several elements like, you know, pre prevention, uh, treatment of mild to moderate, prevention of deterioration of patients from moderate to severe, and treatment of severe patients. And basically where we come up uh, very early in February, 
when you start to see early signals from China, then you know there's enormous information coming from Italy, Lombardy, and then New York on num number of severe cases and deaths. We actually look on our portfolio and make quick decision on few things. First, came up with repurposing or using our two leading um, protein uh, therapeutic proteins. Again, alocosumab and IL-1 inhibitor RPH-104, and we come up with the first clinical trial in Russia for moderate severe COVID patients. At the same time, we initiated a couple of conversations with FDA, and finally we got IND approved for also for COVID uh, with alocosumab in years, and we about kind of to move in this direction, particularly now with the second wave, whatever we will call. We also look on repurposing of a couple of other compounds uh, for treatment of COVID and we initiated a clinical trial. Another, our branch focused on genetics, actually, uh, drug technology, uh, develop a generic favipiravir and trend name now coronavir and run a clinical trial in mild, moderate uh, disease and actually completed this trial, got approval use an emergency and then since September uh, we got a final permanent approval from Russian Ministry of Health and we actually in this in conversation with several other agencies I think the beauty and maybe most um, exciting for me is, is, is as a physician and uh, as a person who working in air farm that we did a very robust methodology, even this relatively small trial with central lab, with uh, CT scan and so on, to get, you know, data. But what is exciting, in September, originated a Fujifilm and Tayama Chemicals actually published first top-line results, first three dose, where their data from clinical trial coming from Japan, very similar to what we received and what we have been able to show in July. So again, it's just confirming that, you know, compound works, it's helping patients, but it's also confirmed by originating in Japan. And a few other things which company did, looking on um, different diagnostics uh, around, you know, COVID and also immune system. And definitely now uh, we are in vaccine manufacturing, both in, in Russian discount and developed Sputnik, and this is publicly available, and also AstraZeneca Oxford. Did our farm experience any support from regulators or Ministry of Health in terms of accelerated procedures? Yes, we did. Uh, and I actually, no. In Russia, was was, was a great dialogue. It's it actually was like not really support. It's dialogue because I remember when um, number of cases of COVID start to grow. It actually was meeting in in, in Ministry of Health where number of pharmaceutical companies discuss openly with this Ministry of Health uh, how to support and help and do a number of emergencies. It's, it's, it's one point around manufacturing, you know, and support and supply and so on. And definitely degree of 441, which came as emergency approval, which actually uh, a nice thing to do and what other countries in different kind of formats is, are using also was a big help too. And I remember, for example, when we submitted uh, at first our clinical trial and, and severe, and, and patients with severe COVID, uh, we did this in uh, end of March and approval time was three weeks. So it was very intensive discussion, dialogue, you know, a few questions, stop clock for conversation for two days, then approval. So three weeks versus, you know, usual three, four months, you kind of is classical. Are we going to face this as normal kind of new normality? I don't think so, but acceleration hopefully will happen. Um, comparing to other countries, we discuss and we have experience, for example, with FDA, because FDA also set up uh, a special gate and their virology division. I was looking on accelerated conversation with, with sponsor. So with very limited pre and time and A&D, and, you know, in very short time, in less than one and a half months, we actually agreed and got uh, approval for our, again, for, to open IND in our compound. Uh, Europe uh, is using also similar strategy, slightly different. They implemented from, since May so-called rolling submissions, where they, they established a special committee looking on this, you know, all COVID protocols and approvals, and then they agreed on the on rolling submissions. One sponsor 
can come up and explain what they're doing, for example, treatment or vaccines is particularly applicable now for vaccines, and then start to submit not a full dossier, but like in, in, in pieces, in, in blocks, and going through very fast dialogue, and it's actually saving a lot of time. And it's again, it's all about dialogue. So in, in the short summary here, so dialogue with Russian Ministry of Health was great. And besides, they experienced a lot of, you know, pressure and number of people also was like sick and so on. But they're keeping, you know, ball rolling very fast and the industry tried to do the same. And only one kind of expectation that for the future, we may accelerate and keep, you know, not maybe such crazy speed, but reasonable speed for, for, for dialogue and approval and particular need for, for dialogue in development. Mikhail, that would be all for today. So thank you very much for your time and we would like to wish you success with your current and future trials. So thank you very much. My pleasure. And again, it's uh, thank you to both companies. Uh, we did and we are doing some work together and we're also looking for future partnerships. So it's again, uh, good luck for both companies working together. Thank you.